Jain and today I am recording and sharing a very important video. This video will help you day one before your exam to complete the entire revision of GS. Is that clear? Yes. So this video will be helping you in completing the complete syllabus revision in just one day, right? That is before your exam. And if you are watching this video in the first week of June, so make sure that you are solving questions also. And if you are watching this video day one before your exam, make sure whatever I'm just telling you, whatever I'm just explaining, whatever I'm just making you to recall, just believe in that and go for it. Okay. If you are listening to me very carefully day one before your exam, no need to study anything separately. All right. So, I always say that whenever you go to write the exam, so by looking at the exam paper, you should not think from where this question came. It means I am assuring that if you are completing the revision of 100% syllabus day one before your exam, no one can stop you to score exemption in IDT. Yes. All right, but your approach to attend the exam paper should be very much clear. Your state of mind should be very much light. And day one before your exam, please don't take stress. Yeah, why? Uh, why one? Uh, why there is a gap between two exams? So a gap exists between two exams so that you could refresh your brain. That's it. It's not for that you everything you just revise, you just start solving the questions. No, that is not. That is just uh, that is just for so that you could refresh your brain and just prepare your mindset for your next exam. Is that clear? So you please firstly, so if you want to attempt, if you want to score exemption that is 60 plus or 70 plus or 80 plus marks, whatever it is. Only by studying, you can't, you can't score. So it means what? It means you will have to complete the syllabus smartly. Your brain, your state of mind should be in a very light mode. And then only you can perform well in your exam. That's it. So it means the day in the uh, exam day, in exam day, make sure you are just relaxed, right? Don't take stress. Don't panic. And please go for it. Yeah, this is just an exam. Don't make it complicated by studying everything. You are a human, right? And you can't complete the everything means one point, two point, everything, all the questions day one before your exam. No. So how to cover that? That is important. So in that, I'll be helping you out. All right. So you need not to take the stress. That how will you be completing the entire vast syllabus revision day one before? No. I will be telling you what to complete, what not to co complete. Only cover that. That is it. That's it. And if you have already studied IDT earlier, your subconscious mind will work in your exam and it will be helping you to perform well. Right? So, let's have a very, uh, means, uh, before I start the revision, I just want to make, uh, I just want to give two clarities about the recording, ab about this video. This video is relevant for June 2022 aspiring. Okay. So if your exams are gene, uh, in June 2022, please watch it. Second thing, language. So language of this video will be simple English. Right? Simple English means what? Understandable for all. Anyone can understand this session easily. Right? So, I have considered all the concerns of all the students. So, don't be bothered about the language also. Right? And customs, 1.5 hours revision. I have already uploaded. Please go and watch it and complete your customs also in just 1.5 hours. Why? Because Customs weight is also of 20 to 25 marks. All right. So, are you guys ready to score exemption in your IDT paper? Right. So, 
so yes if yes so make sure that you are completing this video till end you if you want to score good marks if you want to score good marks in idt so please make sure until you will complete the 100% syllabus revision you won't be able to score good marks why because this is your idt paper and everything institute will ask everything from anywhere all right yes so before i start this video i'll give you one uh, clarification about your exam pattern paper pattern okay so that exam paper pattern till now one mtp has been uploaded by institute i am telling this exam paper pattern paper paper pattern based on this mtp but that is not a surety that institute will ask the question same as per the pattern given means what is the pattern firstly understand this right means listen if you are going to write your exam this should also be cleared in your uh, mind that which section should i attempt first so everything i will tell you but please be till the end of this video and trust me this video gonna help you a lot even if you haven't studied but if you are listening to this video i am making it sure even if you are zero in idt at least you will be getting pass and if you have already studied well then no one can stop to score exemption in idt why am i telling you this because day one before your exam it is very much typical it is it is very uh, it is a very big task to complete the entire revision of the syllabus but here i am making it very much possible why because i have prepared very decent charts to memorize everything so you need not to be bother about that don't worry we'll be covering the entire revision in just 5 hours all right so firstly let's understand the exam paper pattern so your question paper will come in four sections section a b c and d section number a in section a total 20 questions will come please listen to me don't skip this part why because this is actually very important this is the real uh, real uh, life situation with you which you gonna uh, face in your exam right so listen to this very carefully in section number a total 20 questions will come one mark each in section number b total 10 questions will come two marks each this will be based on mcq this will be based on this will be a kind of fill ups or one liner section number c will be descriptive total six questions will come and out of the, uh, out of six any four questions you are supposed to attempt section number d will be one integrated case study that will be for 12 marks in this portion i will i will discuss each and every section in detail don't be bother about and i'll tell you how to attempt and how what is the trick to score exemption in idt paper yes it is very easy to score exemption not a big deal at intermediate level okay so you are in cma inter so you can score exemption easily but please you should know you i'm telling you you can't you can't crack any exam just by hard work just by means day night study and just by studying you can't clear your exam if you want to clear your exams you will have to play smartly because smart work will definitely help you to score good all right yes and please make sure that day one before your exam and in the month of exam your brain is in a very light mode all right please give uh, give some relax to your brain yaar it is not a robot right so pamper your brain as much as you can so that it could revert you back right good so listen here your section number 8 without wasting the time let's understand the paper pattern so your section number 8 will be of 20 marks so one marks e uh, 20 questions one marks each so that will be based on the mcq so total complete whatever is uh, whatever the syllabus you have in idt paper number 11 be gst or uh, or custom complete mixed questions will come in this section 
And trust me, this is very simple. If you have listened, if you have uh, studied IDT once, you will be able to score 20 out of 20. Not a big deal. You can score. Yes. Because very basic questions come in section number A. Coming to section number B. One-liner or fill-ups questions will be there like define, export, define something like that or one-liner, one word like that questions will be there. Total 10 questions will be there for two marks, two marks each. It means, it means your A and B section will be for 40 marks. Oh my God. And trust me, in your online center based exam, you are getting this as a jackpot. Why? Because in your online center based exam, you will have to type somewhere. Right? So this is Section A, Section B requires less typing. Are you getting? So it means this A and B section you can complete in your first hour. Your paper will be of three hours, right? So in your first hour, you can complete. In fact, in less time, in 40 to 50 minutes, you can complete your A and B section. So make sure when you are going to write your IDT paper, so make sure firstly, don't read the question paper, no need to read the question paper. Start solving section number A and section number B. Because while writing, while writing the exam paper, time management is also a very important aspect. All right. So start solving A and B section in your first, first hour. And in your first hour itself, you are done with 40% of your exam paper. Isn't it a very interesting point? Isn't it a very interesting point that in your first hour, you are completing your 40 marks ka question paper? Oh my God, yes. Now, after I'm telling you, if you're going to exam, no, don't just get the, uh, once you logged in, you just start solving A and B without reading C, what is in C, what is in D. Forget about it. Start solving A and B. And in first hour, just make sure that you are done with your 40 marks paper. In next second hour, in your next hour, means one hour is done. In your this second hour, you come to section number C. And in section number C, total six questions will be there. And out of six questions, any four questions you are supposed to, uh, supposed to attempt. In sec, uh, six questions, they are giving that any two questions you can skip. Any four questions of your choice, just attempt that. So I will tell you that select any four questions in which you are 100% sure that yes, I can attempt this question and I can score well. So for descriptive portion, what will they do? How they will ask the question? They will give the space in the question and they will provide you the papers also. It means whatever the answer, for example, what is the net GST liability? Question came, what is the net GST liability? You have written 1 lakhs. Now, how this 1 lakhs came? The space is not there. So, you will have to mention on this paper because this paper sheet will also be evaluated, will also be considered while evaluating your answer. All right. So, make sure out of this uh, six question, four questions you are attempting in which you are 100% sure that yes, I can complete it. So this section number C will be taking hardly, I'm telling you, hardly one hour. Trust me, hardly one hour. And one to one means one hour, 45 minutes. That's it, not more than that. Then come to section number D. Section number D is an integrated case study based question for 12 marks. Oh my God, 12 marks. One question, 12 marks. How this question comes, I am telling you. Section number D is the most simplest question of your paper. Why? Because section number D will be an integrated case study. That is just for me. A big case study will be there. And now uh, four questions will be there. One, two, three, four. And all four questions you will have to answer. These four questions will relate to the case study and you will have to answer. Right? So before you start reading any question, before you start reading any question of exam, make sure you are reading the requirement first. What is the requirement of question? Understand that first, then start reading the question. So come to the last line of your question. 
see what is the requirement part and then start reading your question similarly in case study also this is just a name for case study i'll tell you how question comes in exam don't be bothered about that and i am telling you this question also you will be able to solve and it will be taking hardly half an hour not more than that so 3 hours are very much enough to complete the to attempt the um, three hours are very much enough to attempt all the questions of your paper number 11 is that clear yes so i hope you understood how question comes in exam how you will have to start attempting your paper don't panic just go in exam it's just an exam right and please while writing your exam please feel free means don't panic yaar right okay so shall we proceed with so let's start our complete i am not sure but yes i can say that this uh, video which i am recording can be in uh, can be in two parts so part 1 and in part 2 and one part is already uploaded which is of customs that is of 1.5 hours if you haven't watched that go and watch it i have already shared the link of this uh, customs in the description box first part this is first part i might take a second part to record the video right now ma'am what is this colored chart which you are referring in the revision video this is colored chart if you want to take take it from the text of app i have already provided the link in the description box all right yes so are you guys ready to score exemption in paper number 11 shall we proceed with just drink some water just relax and just start listening to me very carefully that's it you just listen to me very carefully everything will work in exam but make sure when you are listening to me you are there with me only no phone means no any other activities nothing just listen and be focused shall we proceed with yes so here starting with basic chapter introduction ma'am how question comes from this chapter so listen from this chapter mcqs or fill ups can be asked in exam and uh, other way theory question can be asked in exam right so this is a very important i can say means for uh, why it is an important topic because in june 18 1 in exam from this topic total 24 marks question came can you imagine 24 marks from basic introduction chapter and every student normally students skip this chapter so this time chances are there that uh, question can be asked in exam one or two definitely theory question can be asked right but let's cover let's cover the revision of this topic okay so this is what this is paper analysis sheet i show you once Uh, one for one chapter i show you and remaining i have already uploaded on my telegram group so you can get it from there so for uh, with the help of that you will be able to understand that what is a graded chapter what is b graded chapter what is c graded graded chapter what is a b c graded chapter i have already uploaded that on my instagram id of instagram also you can see it from there right why a b c analysis because that helps to study smart how because the weight of the chapter for example this is one chapter this chapter is taking only 10 minutes to cover and from this chapter 10 marks question comes and this is any other chapter this will be taking 30 minutes to complete and only 4 marks question will come so which question uh, which chapter will you co be covering first obviously this chapter right so this is to be called as smart study this is how you will be completing everything smartly all right so i show you how this paper analysis sheet i made you can see in june 18 from basic chapter two questions came in exam for 5 5 marks each and 14 marks mcqs and fill ups came in exam so total for 24 marks question came in exam from this particular chapter in june 18 similarly if you see in december 18 total 19 marks question came if you see in june 19 no question came from this chapter and if in december 19 you can see here seven marks one question came no mcq nothing so in this see in december uh, 21 term not even a single question came from this chapter so it might be possible that from this chapter in this attempt in june 22 they can ask 
one question for sure. I am. I think so, right? So let's start the revision of chapter number one, which is basics. So everyone, listen to me very carefully. That's it. How many types of taxes are there? Two types of taxes are there: direct tax, indirect tax. Direct tax means what? Income tax. I am giving the example. Indirect tax means what? GST, customs, right? Now, direct taxes are dash in nature. Once in MCQ question came, so direct taxes are what? Progressive in nature, and indirect taxes are regressive in nature. Remember this, right? Can be asked in MCQ. I have already highlighted that. You can see it here. Whatever is important, I have already highlighted that. No need to be bothered about. I am there. I have already made it so simple for you guys. So please, if you are liking this video, right? If you are watching this video, don't forget to like. Don't forget to share. Why? Because I have put so much effort in recording this video. I have analyzed everything, all past papers, everything. I have considered everything in making this. Video possible, right? Now, this these charts are also A graded charts. Means what? In charts, I have covered everything so nicely, right? Colorful, colorful charts are there. So, if you are watching this video in the first week of June, then definitely you should go for these charts. If you are watching this day one before, then. Then no need. Yeah, just listen because you don't have time to read the charts again, right? So yes, now uh, let's don't waste the time. Now let's start. Okay, what is GST? What is GST? Day one before, not day one. Actually, this is not my regular class. This is my revision class, which I am uploading on YouTube. So I should talk like in a different way. So listen, what is GST? So listen, GST is what a tax. Tax on what? Tax on supply. Supply of what goods or services, and paid by a taxable person, right? GST is a taxes on supply of goods or services, except 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 taxes on alcoholic liquor for human consumption. It means there is no GST on alcoholic liquor for human consumption. So GST is a tax on supply of goods or services, or both, except taxes on alcoholic liquor for human consumption paid by a taxable person at the maximum rate of forty percent. So if in exam question will come once already asked in exam, what that what is the maximum rate of GST forty percent? What is the maximum rate of CGST? 20%. What is the maximum rate of SGST or UTGST? 20%. What is the maximum rate of IGST? 40%. So before you answer, read it carefully. All right. Yes. So what is GST? Along with advantages of GST, has already been asked in one exam, December 19 for seven marks. All right. This is a very simple question. It will uh, come. I hope you will be able to write. This is very simple. Now just listen. Just listen. Right. Now. Come to advantages of GST. This question already came along with what is GST in December 19 for seven marks and in June 18 separately for five marks. What are the advantages of GST? GST is a what? One nation, one tax. GST is what? One nation, one tax. Right? Because of GST, many removal of many other taxes. Right? Removal of cascading effect, increased ease of doing business, boost exports, creation of employment. These all are the what advantages of GST. Please read it carefully. Can be asked in exam, right? So these all are the advantages of GST. Coming to next page here. Listen to me very carefully. Supply can be interstate or intrastate. What is intrastate? When supply is within same state or within same UT, then this is what intrastate. But if supply is between two different states or two different UTs or between one state or one UT, then we call it interstate. So whenever there is an interstate supply, always one tax will come IGS. Whenever there is an intrastate supply, CGST will come plus SGST or UTGST. If supply is within the same state, then 
C plus S will come. If supply is within same UTs, union territories, then C plus UT GST will come. That's it. Once in exam, in MCQ, question came. Whenever there is an interstate supply, means supply is between Bihar and Maharashtra, then which uh, tax shall be living? The answer is what? IGST. Is that clear? Yes. Now, always remember Delhi, Pondicherry, and Jammu and Kashmir. They are what? They are though UTs, but for the purposes of GST. Since these UTs are state with the legislature, so it means here, 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 here. If supply is within Delhi, then not you. C, S, C plus S will come means for the purposes of GST, they have been assumed as what? State. Why? Because they are states with legislature, right? So, your UT GST will not come. I hope you got it. Means Delhi, Puducherry and JNK will be treated as if they are state. That's it. What is need of GST? You can write it in your language. You can write it. What? What is the need of GST rule? You can write it in your language, right? Now, there's it is a perfect now common portal what is common portal of gst very important common portal means what www.gst.gov.in they won't ask what is common portal they will ask who manages this common portal who manages the common portal of GST? So GST network, GST network manages the common portal. What are the functions or role of GST networks? Already asked in seven marks. For seven marks in December 18. So I have already given one mnemonic. The mnemonic is what? PCRRG. What are the functions or roles of GST networks? PCRRG. PCRRG. Settlement of IGST payment, creation of chalans, filing of return, filing uh, of uh, registration application and generation of business intel intelligence and analytics. So these are the functions of GST network. What are the commodities kept outside the ambit of GST? On It means on two commodities. Means write down the name of the things on which there is no GST. So I have already told you that Alcoholic liquor for human consumption, no GST. Specifically excluded from the GST ambit. And then other one is what? NAP HM. NAP HM is what? Five petrol products. On these five pro petrol products, GST shall be levied from the date notified by the government. NAP HM means what? Natural gas, aviation turbine fuel, petroleum crude, high speed motors, high speed diesel, motor spirit, right? So if an exam already came in, uh, December 18 for two marks, write down the commodities on which no GST. I hope you understood this one. Now, what is the definition of goods and service? Not so important, but understand that goods does not include money and security. Always remember, goods does not include money and security. Once in MCQ, question came that goods does not include option number one, two. Listen, what is goods? Goods means every kind of movable property other than money and security and includes ex naval claims and growing crops. So it means money and securities are not covered under the definition of goods. Remember this, right? So money and securities are not goods. Coming to next page, which is GST Council, very important, already came in 18, June 18 for five marks. Whenever GST Council question comes in exam, always remember article number 279A empowers President of India to constitute GST Council. So once in exam question came in MCQ that under, under which article President of India has power to constitute GST Council under 279, under article 279 of the, 279A of the Indian Constitution, right? Now, who are the members of GST Council? Who will be the members of this council? Listen, Union Finance Minister as a chairperson. Second, Union Minister of State in charge of finance as a member. And then state finance minister as a member, state finance minister as a member, sorry, the state finance minister or state revenue minister or any other minister nominated by each state as a member. Oh my God, ma'am, how to remember? So listen, here, this you remember. Why? Because 
once in exam in mcq question came who is the chairperson of gst council who is the chair person of gst council union finance minister i will recommend that this portion please read day one before your exam in same day same day this is ldr same day because you won't be remembering this even if you are studying this day one before your exam so it's better same day in the morning you just have a look up now other question can be asked what are what is the guiding principle of gst council so harmonization gst council ensures what that harmonization on different aspects of gst between the state and central government as well as among states so this is the guiding principle of the gst council what are the functions of gst council very important what are the functions of gst council so the functions of gst council is what makes recommendation to central government and state government on uh, get tp gst council makes recommendation to central government and state government on get dt this is mimoni on gst legislation including rules and uh, notifications exemption threshold limit dispute resolution and tax now this is the question which can be asked very important tax is subsumed in gst and tax is not subsumed in gst so taxes which have already been subsumed in gst vat cst octri entry tax purchase tax luxury tax tax is not subsumed in gst customs duty stamp duty tax on electricity entertainment tax vehicle tax and excise on liquor all right yes or no everyone yes last question of this chapter is salient features of igst already came in december 18 for 6 marks the specialty of this these charts is what that i have already mentioned which question has already been asked in exam with marks with attempt so that you just understand how question comes in exam right yes now whatever you know about igst just make the point right there no need to mug it up that's it now one thing i am covering here can be asked in mcq which constitutional amendment is done to pass the gst council gst bill which constitutional amendment is done to pass gst bill what is the answer 101st 101st constitutional amendment is done to pass the gst bill now listen this can be asked also what is dual gst model or dual gst structure very simple yaar yeah. whenever there is an intra state supply whenever there is an intra state supply you charge c plus s or u it means what it means what levying tax with the two different tax components right in india both cgst and sgst or utgst are the components levied on a single transaction within state due to its federal nature so read it dual gst model or structure means what levying tax with two different tax components right in india both cgst and sgst or utgst are the components are the components levied on a single transaction within state due to its federal due to its which nature federal nature that can also be asked in one liner or one single mcq so remember that all right so this is how we have done with this chapter which is name uh, the name of the chapter was basics or introduction right now chapter number 2 is what supply under gst how question comes from this topic so listen from this particular topic firstly i tell you what is the exam rate considering the past trend the exam rate of i have already made it here you can see it. in june 18 no questions came in december 18 five marks and total 10 marks question came right in june 19 total 10 marks question came from this chapter in december 19 only four marks question came from this chapter and in uh, december 2021 also one question came from circular okay i'll tell you that circular don't worry so if i say this is yes important topic why this chapter is important this chapter you can't skip because this chapter will help you to solve the registration chapter will help you to solve value of supply will help you to solve exemption questions why because if you know what is supply then only you won't be stuck in solving big questions all right so let's understand without wasting the time what is scope of supply right from this chapter they can ask write a short note on composite or mixed supply write a short note on composite supply difference composite or mixed supply with example differentiate right or otherwise they will give you 
two to four transactions and they will ask whether this is supply or not so understand what is the scope of supply so in this particular topic i will be covering two sections section number 7 and 8 all right yes and three schedules so listen to me very carefully okay so section number 7 defines the scope of supply section number 7 1 says supply includes what supply includes what a b c supply includes a b c if you want want to check whether a particular transaction or event is a supply you will have to check three elements whether there is a form all form any form this form is what whether they, uh, it is sale exchange lease uh, barter transfer something should be there no But then we call it supply for our consideration and in the course or furtherance of business if all these three components exist on a particular in a particular transaction or event that will be treated as supply right yes now section number 71b import of services for a consideration whether in the course or uh, whether uh, in the course or furtherance of business or for personal purpose means this was not covering here so they cover it here right so import of services for a consideration whether you are using the services for personal purpose or for business purpose that will also be included under the scope of supply i'll give you one example i'll give you one example so listen to me very carefully for example you are in india you have imported certain services from dubai now you have paid consideration also now you have imported services from dubai and you have paid consideration right now whatever services you have imported for example that is for personal purpose or what or for say business purpose then also it will be treated as import of service that will be treated as supply right and on this supply you will have to pay you will have to pay gst under rcm being a recipient that point again i'll cover in our rcm topic don't worry now third four activities even without consideration has been prescribed have been prescribed under schedule number 1 will be treated as supply even if no consideration is there all right so if you want to determine whether a particular transaction is supply or not firstly check a then check if that is an a case of import of service then if all these three elements like import of services for a consideration whether or not for the business purpose then is it is also supply if there is no consideration then check whether these uh, the transaction is covered under four activities if yes then it will be supply as per schedule number 1 otherwise not all right yes so now understand what is schedule number 1 schedule 1 says that four activities can be asked direct question one direct question can be asked write a short note on activities which are uh, which are supply even if without consideration can be asked in exam a direct question is given in your mtp right yes now listen four activities which are without consideration still supply activity number 1 permanent transfer or disposal of business asset on which itc has been taken what is this permanent transfer or disposal of business asset on which itc has been taken for example this is you one ac has been installed in your office now you get you are getting bored of your ac now you want to sell this ac ac is your business asset when you have purchased this ac you have already taken itc on this ac now you are selling this ac without the consideration to your friend so even if that is without without consideration still it is a supply because on which you have already taken the itc second <clears throat> supply between related person or distinct person in the course or furtherance of business in the course or furtherance of business business even if without consideration still be, uh, will be treated as supply for example this is factory of mr a and this is store of mr a here toys manufacturing 
toys are manufacturing then after manufacturing toys are sold from the store so here firstly firstly toys will be transferred from factory to store that will be obviously without consideration so still it will be treated as whenever supply is a between uh, is between related person or distinct person it will be treated as supply if it is in the course or furtherance of business means what from store you will be furthering selling it no this is your business right so related person means what what is related person listen Rela related person means what related person they are related person not so important but employer employee are also related person but remember but remember if here you will see oh my god what happened if here you will see this gift is up to if employer is giving gift to employee if that amount is up to 50000 per employee per year then that will not be treated as supply all right uh, remember this limit can be asked in mcq up to 50000 no supply means equal to 50000 or less than 50000 no supply that's it all right now coming to third activity when supply is between principal or agent principal and agent when principal supplies goods to agent and agent supplies goods on behalf of principal and issues invoice in his own name if agent invoice issues invoice in his own name and selling the goods to third person then this supply i am talking about this principal will be sending goods to agent free of cost without consideration then this supply will be treated as supply if agent has the authority to issue invoice in his own name if principal directly is issuing the invoice then then this will this this will not be treated this transaction between principal and agent will not be treated as supply right can be vice versa also no need to read this coming to import fourth point fourth activity importation of service for example this is person out of india and this is person in india and person in india means person out of india supplies services in the course or furtherance of business to person in india and this person out of india is related person or distinct person is they both are related person and distinct person then even if this that is without consideration will be treated as supply as per schedule number 1 so remember let's have a quick recap because can be asked in exam in schedule number 1 listen i will give you a quick recap don't worry i am there right no need to be bother about supply includes sec uh, section number 71 a b and c all form for a consideration in the course or furtherance of business if in on a particular if in a particular transaction these three elements exist that is a supply right otherwise that is not the supply unless until covered in b or c b says import of services for a consideration whether or not whether for business purpose or for personal purpose, personal purpose that is also supply third four activities covered under schedule 1 even if without consideration still supply right so what are the four activities covered in schedule 1 permanent transfer or disposal of business asset on which itc has been availed second supply between related person or distinct person in the course or furtherance of business but remember that 50000 ka limit all right third means up to 50000 if employer is giving gift to employee and the value is up to because employer employee uh, are also relative right so 50000 then no gist no supply third supply between principal and agent it will be treated as supply even if without consideration if agent has the authority to issue invoice in his own name to whom to third party fourth import of services from related person or distinct person in the course or furtherance of business without consideration still it is a supply right so in exam make sure that if any transaction will come whether it is a supply or not remember this that's it right now once you have determined that a particular transaction 
is a supply as per section number 71. Then 71A says that this is supply. You have already identified that this transaction is supply. Then it will be treated as supply of goods or supply of service. Either it will be a supply of goods or it will be a supply of service. So that has been described under schedule number two. It means what? Supposingly, I am uh, selling you mouse. I am supplying you mouse. This is what supply of goods. But now, for example, second example, if I'm not supplying you mouse, instead I'm giving you mouse to use on rent, then this is supply of service. I am providing you services, right? So here, what is supply of goods? What is supply of service? It is general point. After seeing one particular transaction, you will be able to identify that, yes, this is supply of goods. This is supply of services. I have already provided this list. No need to read this. But always remember job work. Job work means what? Processing or treating someone's good. For example, you went to a tailor with one cut piece and tailor stitched the shirt. Then tailor is giving you shirt. This is supply of goods or supply of services. Obviously, tailor is not selling you shirt. He is giving just, he has just given what? Stitching services. So here, this is what supply of service. Similarly, work contract services, supply of service. You have, uh, you went to one restaurant. Restaurant has given you food also, stay services also. This is com combined. This is supply of good also, supply of service also. Now, this will always be treated as supply of service. So this is the list. If you have time, read it. Otherwise, skip it because ultimately you will be able to identify whether this is supply of goods, this is supply of services. That's it. Coming to section number seven. Seven one done. Seven one a done. Seven two is what negative list of supply means. Following transactions are neither supply of goods nor supply of services. I have given one 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 one. Do you remember? Demonic F L A G E E N CH. Funeral services, uh, land, sale of land services, sale of land and building, ex naval claims, except lottery betting and gambling. G. Services provided by government officials. B. Bond to bond transfer. Employee is giving services to employer. And N. Supply of goods from one non taxable territory to non another non taxable territory without bringing it it to India. C, quota tribunal services, H, high CC. All these are what neither supply of goods nor supply of services. So if in, yeah, this has been defined under, this has been, these all activities are given under schedule number three. Got it? So if in exam, question will come, write down the list of, write down the negative list of supply. Will you be able to write? Yes. This is the negative list of supply means on these transactions, these all are neither supply of goods nor supply of services. I have already given the remark. I have already given the mnemonic, right? So this is so simple. I'll only remember the full form. That's it. Now one more thing is there. What is that? This. Activities or transactions under Article 243G and 243W, which is Panchayat and Municipality Activity and Alcohol Liquor License. These, all, these are also neither supply of goods nor supply of services. Now last, but last, yes, last. What is composite and mixed supply? Already came in these attempts. What is composite supply? I have already given the example of mobile and charger. Composite supply means what? Two or more supply? which are naturally bundled. If you will go to purchase a mobile, they will give you charger also. Why? Because they can't work independently. It means they are in conjunction with each other. One of which is principal supply. You went to purchase mobile, right? That is what? Purchase of mobile is what? Principal supply. You didn't go to purchase charger, right? So purchase of mobile is what? Principal supply. Tax rate shall be applicable. On this supply, tax rate will be applicable. Which rate? The rate of principal supply. Example, I have already given. What is mixed supply? This is also consists of two or more supply, which is not naturally bundled. Someone is selling you spoon with soap. That is not naturally bundled, right? Can be supplied independently, still supplied together. Tax rate. So tax rate applicable to the supply that attracts highest rate. Here, this is highest rate. Here, it is principal rate. So for example, this is combo. For this, rate is 0%. 
for this 8%, for this 28%, for this 10%, this is example. So on this composite supply, the rate will be applicable highest. Rate, all right. So done and dusted chapter number uh, supply, scope of supply is done and dusted. These are few circulars just for reading, just for reading. No need to read it day one before your exam. Now coming to next chapter, shall we proceed with guys? Do you want to tell me please, do you need a break? If you want to take one break, please take it for two minutes and then restart. Pause the video for two minutes, recall the things, whatever we have covered till now and then restart. Okay. Yes. Take a pause of two minutes. Actually, uh, one break in half of an hour, I mean, supposing you are studying, right? You studied for half an hour, take a break of two minutes. Take a break of two minutes between, between uh, in between, right? So that will help you. So, so starting this chapter, chapter number three, which is levy and collection and person liable to pay GST, right? In your module, if you see the study notes, no, no need to means day, day one before I won't suggest that study start reading your study notes actually it will be taking time right now listen levy in collection and person liable to pay GS because I have already covered each and every single point of your study notes in this chart so I hope you are understanding my words right now listen levy in collection and person liable to pay GST under RCM what is the importance of this chapter important B graded, but yes, I can say this is important. B graded, right? Now, if you will see June 18, four marks question came in exam. If you will see in, till now they haven't asked any question, right? So can be asked in December, uh, June 2020. Very simple topic, just understand, okay? So you can see the colorful charts. If you want to take it, please take it. Worth having, okay? Now, coming to next page. So, I'll tell you one thing. What? Listen. Generally, what is the taxable event under GST? So, everyone knows that supply is the taxable event under GST. Supply is a taxable event under GST means person causing supply. Person causing supply will be liable to pay tax. Who supply? Who makes supply? Supplier. So generally under GST, supplier, generally under GST, supplier will be liable to pay GST. But in few cases, means 
in case of notified goods and in case of notified services recipient will be liable to pay gst so what are those notified goods what are those notified services where recipient will be liable to pay gst and listen when supplier is paying gst we call it forward charge mechanism when recipient is charging or uh, recipient is paying gst we call it what rcm is what reverse charge mechanism all right so listen two mnemonics only in this particular topic you will have to remember two mnemonics means what what are those notified goods on which gst is payable by recipient so the notified goods on which gst shall be payable by recipient and not by the supplier so those notified goods are what listen t square t square plus if in exam you see any of the goods it means remember there not supplier in fact recipient will be liable to pay gst under rcm all right see <clears throat> cashew nuts not shelled or peeled cashew nuts not shelled or peeled second c raw cotton c tendu leaf fourth tobacco leaves p priority sector lending certificate l lottery tickets u used goods s scrap if you see in exam mostly cashew nut question comes comes right they will give you one question and they'll calculate uh, they'll ask who will be liable to pay gst and what will be the net gst liability we'll do one question don't worry already came in one uh, once already came in june 18 i'll tell you so if in exam you see any of the supplier of goods remember that in that case not supplier but re but recipient will be liable to pay gst under rcm what are those goods cashew nuts not peeled or shelled raw cashew nut always remember raw or cashew nut not shelled or peeled if that is peeled or shelled then then supplier will be liable to pay gst then rcm will not come okay so first is what cashew nut uh, not shelled or peeled that is raw cashew nut raw cotton tobacco leaves tendu leaves priority priority sector lending certificate lottery tickets used goods and scrap in case of these supplies always recipient will pay gst so in question in exam remember that okay now coming to services what are the notified services on which on which gst shall be payable by recipient means under uh, on which rcm will be applicable so that uh, the mnemonic to remember notified services notified for notified goods it was what c square t square plus and for what are the notified services where gst shall be payable by recipient so it is what b diagrams b diagrams plus four other services all right b diagrams plus four other services last as i didn't uh, tell you know you s what what was s s was silk yarn okay s was silk yarn used goods and last as i don't, don't remember what did i tell you but last s is what silk yarn in case of goods all right so b means what business facilitator business facilitator supplying goods to banking company business facilitator supplying sorry business facilitator supplying services to banking company everyone you tell me who is supplier business facilitator who is recipient banking company who will pay gst banking company under rcm similarly come to d we have two d's here okay we have two d's here one d is what director director is supplying services to whom company or body corporate then who is supplier director who is recipient company or body corporate always remember company or body corporate will pay gst under rcm being a recipient because i am teaching you rcm no reverse charge mechanism second listen here one circular is there that if director is providing services to company or body corporate in the capacity of employee employee then then this is neither supply of goods nor supply of services as per schedule number 3 
so rcm will also not come so if director is providing services to company or body corporate in any other capacity for example he is an independent director he is a managing director then then our rcm will come otherwise if director is uh, providing services as an employee then that is because employer employee is providing sir flag bench you remember e yes. so that will not be neither be a supply of services nor a supply of goods so remember if director is providing services in other than employee capacity then only rcm will come second is what direct selling agent is providing services direct selling agent being an individual is providing services to whom to banking company or nbfc then who will pay gst under rcm similarly i i means what insurance agent insurance agent is providing services to whom you just remember the full form that's it you should just know that in this case recipient will be liable to pay gst that's it right insurance agent is uh, providing services to insurance company or person carrying on insurance business then person carrying on insurance business being a recipient will pay gst under rcm a first is what advocate or arbitral tribunal advocate or arbitral tribunal is providing services to big business entity then then big business entity being a recipient uh, will pay gst under rcm next is what agent of a business correspondent providing services to business correspondent then business correspondent being a recipient will pay gst under rcm you just remember full form right gta gta who has opted for 5% rate of gst then recipient will pay gst under rcm gta services on government government is providing renting of immobile property to registered person or any other services then recipient will pay gst under rcm recovery agent is providing services to bank or financial institution then the bank and financial institution being a recipient will pay gst under rcm right i hope you got it now renting of movable or renting of motor vehicle to body corporate then you just remember what is the full form in this case if that is the supply then in this case rcm whatever the question is given you just remember this full form and you just understand that in this case recipient will pay gst under rcm that's it renting of motor vehicle services this case also rcm will be applicable in case author artist photographer music composer providing services to publisher in that case also publisher will pay gst under rcm members of overseeing committee to rbi then recipient who is rbi who is recipient rbi rbi will pay gst under rcm similarly sponsorship services to body corporate or partnership firm security lending services in case of security services in all these cases also rcm will be applicable and recipient will pay gst under rcm that's it next diagrams done b diagrams plus two four other services next two is what transfer of development right or long term lease of land services to promoter then promoter being a recipient will pay gst under rcm any other services imported in case of import always recipient will pay gst under rcm that's it whatever i'm saying that's remember that's it okay all right now no need to remember section number whenever it is required i'll tell you that remember this okay now e commerce operator or aggregator what is e commerce operator or aggregator everyone e commerce operator or aggregator means what for example hat housekeeping services accommodation services and transportation services so for housekeeping services urban company for accommodation services oyo and for transportation services ola or uber so they all are what e commerce operator or aggregator all right now in this case who will pay gst under rcm or who will pay gst not so important just for reading always remember e commerce will pay gst under e commerce operator will pay gst you remember that only right for example e commerce operator doesn't have physical presence in india then any represented the person whom if eco is representing that person will pay gst 
for example there is no physical presence also no representative also then eco will appoint one person to pay gst i hope you got it okay so this is just for reading concept you can read it and you can see the example i have already given it just for reading that's it so the question which i i was talking about this this question came in exam one so let's have a quick overview of this question former sold cashew nuts not peeled or shelled to messrs rajesh international who is supplier former who is recipient rajesh international you know in case, in this case rcm will pay uh, will be applicable and recipient will pay gst so in this quest question what first requirement of the question was who is liable to pay gst who is liable to pay gst recipient who is recipient messrs rajesh international now listen value of supply was 1 lakhs gst rate was 5% ITC available with recipient was how much? Total ITC available with the recipient was of rupees four thousand. Now calculate the net liability of Messrs. Rajis. I'll tell you no. I already told you that recipient under RCM will pay GST. That is Messrs. Rajis. So here, what is the tax liability? One lakhs. Since both are in same state in Tamil Nadu, you can see it. Former is in Tamil Nadu. And recipient is also in Tamil Nadu, so it means intra-state supply. So recipient will pay G, uh, C plus S one lakhs at the rate of five percent, means two point five percent CGST, five percent SGS, two point five percent SGS. So twenty five hundred CGST, twenty five hundred SGS. What about this ITC? In this case, since recipient is paying the uh, GST under RCM. he can't use he can't use this itc he will have to pay the complete tax without using the itc so net liability of the recipient will be how much 2500 cgst 2500 sgst that's it this was the simple concept yes or no so this chapter is also done and dusted whatever i said just listen that if you are referring this video day one before just listen that and that's it don't start reading everything from the charts okay and if you are uh, watching this video in the first week of june then you can read the chart note also and you can also take the chart note from the app that's it now coming to next chapter and the next chapter is very simple which is composition scheme composition scheme is what a simple tax paying scheme simple tax paying scheme right So in this particular chapter, I'll teach you section number ten and section number ten to eight. Both these section numbers are very important. Read, uh, you just remember, right? So listen, come to the chart. Composition scheme. Firstly, I'll teach you section number ten. Composition scheme. So this is a simple tax paying scheme, right? Who is eligible to offer composition scheme? Any manufacturer, trader, or restaurant or catering services, right? Who is not disqualified means who is not ineligible. Who are eligible? Uh, who are ineligible from composition? M I N E S people are ineligible. So I told you that if any person who is a manufacturer or a trader or a restaurant or catering service provider. which uh, who is not covered under ineligibility that is under minas then he will be eligible for composition scheme provided his aggregate turnover of preceding financial year is up to 1.5 cr or 75 lakhs listen this is very important for example this is manufacturer or trader or restaurant and catering service provider he wants to opt for composition scheme for year 18 19 so is he eligible or not firstly he will be eligible if he is not ineligible it means if he is not covered under minas then he is eligible provided his preceding financial year aggregate turnover is up to 1.5 cr or up to 75 lakhs when 1.5 cr once when 75 lakhs so listen if he is if he 
belongs from mental state then take 75 lakhs if he belongs from bhoja state take 1.5 cr right means what manipur mizoram meghalaya arunachal pradesh nagaland tripura uttarakhand sikkim himachal pradesh other state like kerala tamil nadu mp cg delhi maharashtra jnk and assam right so if this person if this person will be eligible for composition if in preceding financial for example he wants to opt for 18 19 then preceding 17 18 pre preceding year financial uh, preceding financial year aggregate turnover is up to if up to 1.5 cr or 75 lakh 1.5 cr check in case of hoja state and this check in case of mental state then he will be eligible to opt for composition in year 18 19 what is the here don't get confused this is arunachal pradesh this is assam this a is in of um, arunachal pradesh is of mental state and assam is of hoja small word small word so big word big word limit 75 lakhs small limit big word 1.5 cr big uh, big limit small word so this is how you'll have to remember that so that you couldn't you just don't face the confusion in exam center now what is aggregate turnover a very important topic a uh, very important thing actually what is aggregate turnover so remember aggregate turnover includes tie square taxable supplies inter or intra state supplies exempt supplies export supplies but aggregate turnover does not include means excludes all gst taxes any inward supply inward supply on which you are paying taxes under rcm any interest income interest income will not be included in the aggregate turnover right that's it this is important remember this okay now few important points that i'll tell you that you should know uh, you should just remember day one before your example aggregate turnover is to be checked pan india basis okay supplier cannot opt normal scheme for one state and composition scheme for another state remember this very important composite supplier cannot avail any itc he cannot issue any tax invoice but he can issue bill of supply already asked in one marks remember this okay all right now no need to give intimation in each state to opt for composition right no need to give intimation separate intimation is not required that's it now what will be the rate at what rate composite supplier will be paying gst so if he is a manufacturer then 0.5% of turnover cgst 0.5% of turnover sgst if he is a trader then 0.5% of taxable turnover cgst 0.5% of taxable turnover sgst restaurant or catering service provided 2.5% of turnover 2.5% of turnover c and s rate who are not eligible very important who is not eligible who are not eligible for composition can be asked in a uh, direct question as a theory so remember m i n e s are not eligible for composition m means what manufacturer of p a i t manufacturer of pan masala aerated water ice cream and tobacco they are not eligible but trader trader of pan masala aerated water ice cream and tobacco are eligible remember this already came in exam if any person who is making interstate outward supply then ineligible not eligible n means what he is a nrtp or a casual taxable person and if he is supplying exclusively supplying non taxable goods or services then not eligible for composition right e if supplier supplying goods through e commerce operator he is also not but his own portal then eligible s any service provider is also not eligible for composition scheme except restaurant catering service provider because i have already told you that restaurant or caterers are eligible and any person who is any service provider sir it is providing services right then he can provide services up to 10% of turnover of preceding financial year or 5 lakhs whichever is higher up to this amount he can provide the services he is eligible but beyond that he is not eligible for composition scheme now what Uh, many service providers are not covered under section number 10 right 
only uh, restaurant and catering service providers are covered and those service providers who are providing services up to 10% of turnover of the preceding financial year or 5 lakhs whichever is higher up to this amount the service providers the, they are providing services up to this amount uh, amount are eligible otherwise they are not eligible then for other service providers yes for other service providers we have a different composition scheme that is scheme section number 10 to 8 scheme for service providers right so who is eligible simple service providers who are not covered under section number 10 and who is not ineligible they are eligible provided their aggregate turnover of pre uh, preceding financial year is up to 50 lakh what will be the rate of tax for service provided tax of rate uh, rate of tax will be 3% of turnover cgst 3% of turnover sgst here this 50 lakhs the limit is for all the states Mantra soldier bifurcation is not there, right? Ineligibility, same as section number 10, right? Same as section number 10, read it. Now, various forms for uh, various forms for composite supplier. Not so important, not so important. Only CMP08 payment of tax. Whenever composite supplier makes the payment of tax, he makes the payment by using CMP08 tax. Now, shall we proceed with our different topic? So, the next topic is what? The next topic of revision is sec uh, uh, section number. In this particular topic, I'll teach you 12, 13, and 14. In this topic total, we have 12, section number 13, and section number 14. Guys, are you getting bored? Please don't. Please, uh, at least if you're not studying anything, don't study. I won't say to study anything, but at least listen this video. Even if you want, you can uh, watch this video in this speed also. But at least listen. Uh, one, I mean, day one before uh, your exam, just listen this video. It's going to help you a lot. All right. You will be thanking me later and telling me. All right. Yes, that's it. So yes, now starting with time of supply. So every in each and every single attempt, one five marks sure sort question will definitely come from this topic. So time of supply means what? What is the taxable event under GST? Supply is the taxable event under GST. Now, to complete this supply, there are n number of events involved. For example, supplier will issue the invoice. Supplier will supply the goods. Recipient will make the payment. So, n number of in, uh, movement, movements are involved. n number of movements are involved. So, at what point of time? At which point of time does GST become payable? At what point of time supplier or recipient will pay GST? When? So, for this, we have time of supply topic. In this particular topic, I will teach you section number 12, section number 13, and section number 14. 12 is for time of supply in case of goods, 13 time of supply in case of services, 14 time of supply whenever there is a change in rate. Okay, without wasting the time, let's start this topic. So, time of supply in case of goods. Relevant sections I'll teach you. In this particular section, we have total six subsections. Okay, six subsections. So, what is important, I'll teach you. 12.2 is important. 12.3 is important. I'll teach you everything, don't worry. Everything cover everything. Everything is important. So listen. Time of supply in case of forward charge, that is suppliers. What will be the time of supply? Date of issue of invoice or last date on which invoice should have been issued or date of receipt of payment, whichever is earlier, that will be the time of supply. Date of issue of invoice, last date on which issue, invoice should have been issued and date of receipt of payment, whichever is earlier, that will be the time of supply in case of suppliers, in case of forward charge. But always remember, no GST on advance received for supply of goods, no GST on advance received for supply of goods for small taxpayer. So in case of small taxpayers, only check, only check these two. Date of issue of invoice or last date to issue invoice, whichever is earlier, that is now, recipient view, reverse charge. Under RCM, that is recipient view, what will be the time of supply? So, date of receipt of goods, 
supposingly you are receiving time supply and giving you mouse so you are receiving it first event date of receipt of good second i'll be making pay, uh, you will be making date of receipt of good think from the uh, point of view of recipient you are making the payment date of making of payment and i'll be issuing the invoice to take 31st day from the date of issue of invoice by the supplier which had is earlier that will be the time of supply got it yes now come to 124 time of supply in case of voucher if supply is identifiable at the time of issue of voucher then date of issue of voucher will be the time of supply if that is not identifiable then date of redemption will be time of supply in case of any other cases any other cases means what cases not covered under 2 3 4 or 6 sub point sub section then due date of return if you are a registered person and date of payment of tax if you are an unregistered person that will be the time of supply in case of ipl interest penalty late fees that is addition in value date of receipt of interest penalty or late fees will be what time of supply so in this section number 12 2 is very important 12 3 is very important these two sections are very 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 important come to notes last date to issue invoice means when the invoice should have been issued so listen this is important if supply involves movement of goods then on or before the removal of goods the invoice should have been issued right that's it remaining parts parts i'll be covering in tax invoice chapter date of receipt of payment is what if see only one date is given then that is okay if two dates are given for example date of entry in book or date of credit in bank account two dates are given then take whichever is earlier as a date of receipt of payment date of making payment is what date of entry and date of debit here it was credit because receiving the payment right which i take which i was oh yeah that's it yes or no yes now coming to section number 13 which is time of supply in case of services that is also important here also we have total six sub sections so 4 5 and 6 as it is copy pasted as i taught you in uh, section number 12 no same <clears throat> so what is important 13 and 32 and 33 what will be the time of supply in case of services in case of forward charge which is supplier fee so simple if invoice is issued on time when invoice will be assumed that it is issued on time when it is issued within 30 days very important already came in uh, exam in mcq within 30 days from the date of supply and 45 days in case of insurance company banking company and uh, financial institution including nbfc so on or before this date means within 30 days or within 45 45 in case of insurance company banking company and financial institution invoice should be issued right yes so if invoice is issued on time then date of invoice or date of receipt of payment whichever is earlier will be time of supply if invoice is not issued three days are there yeah listen date of supply date of invoice date of payment if invoice is issued on time on time means within 30 days generally then it issued on time then then date of invoice and date of payment whichever is earlier will be time of supply if invoice is not issued on time then the date of supply or date of payment whichever is earlier will be time of supply that's it as simple as that here again date of receipt of payment means what same if two dates are given take whichever is earlier if only one date is given take only one date right now 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 this is done now coming to 12 uh, 13 three date of making payment yeah, that is reverse charge receipt okay date of making payment or 61st day from the date of issue of invoice by the supplier whichever is earlier will be time of supply that's it done and dusted rest don't read not so important is that clear everyone so if in exam from this chapter question will come always remember firstly read the question determine whether this is a supply of goods or supply of service if supply of goods then determine time of supply using section number 12 if supply of services then determine time of supply using section number 13 again here also if supplier view then 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 12 2 if recipient view then 12 3 
If question is silent supplier or recipient, then assume that is supplier. If RCM, then they will mention that they, this is the case of RCM. If question is of supply of services, then determine using 13. Again, if it is forward char mechanism, use 13 2 provisions. Otherwise, use 13 3 provision in case of RCM. That's it, yeah. It's as simple as that, right? Now, coming to section number 40. Time of supply whenever there is a change in rate. So listen. Listen to me very carefully. For example, this is 10th February 2019. From this date, GST rate changes. GST rate on a particular supply changes from 8% to 12%. Before this date, the rate was 10, 8%. Now the rate became 12%. From this date and onward, the rate will be 12%. Now in this case, how will you be determining time of supply? I have told you know, three dates are there. Date of supply, date of payment, date of invoice. Always consider in section number 14. Section number 14 is for both goods and for services. Both. 12 for goods, 13 for uh, services and 14 is for both. Right? So listen. Date of supply is, so for example, this is girlfriend. This is boyfriend one. This is boyfriend two. Always take date of supply as girlfriend. And date of payment is boyfriend one. Date of invoice is boyfriend two. Now, for example, date of supply is before this date. Before this date. For example, this date of supply is 8th February. That is before, right? Date of payment is after this date. For example, this is 11th February. This is off. And date of invoice is also before this date. Before this, this date. Uh, uh, for example, this is 10th January. This is before. Now, what will be the time of supply here? Here, everyone tell me who is with girlfriend? Who is matching with girlfriend? At this point of time, this before before right. So date of invoice will be time of supply. Second case. For example, this date of supply is before this date. Date of payment is also before this date. Before this date. Before which date? Before change in rate date. Okay. This is after then. Who is with girlfriend now? This date of payment. Date of payment will be what? Time of supply. Coming to third case. When date of supply is before, the, before, this is after and this is also after. Then at this point of time, who is with girlfriend? No one. So who will come first? Boyfriend one or boyfriend two? Uh, two. Who will come first? Means whichever is earlier. That will be, means date of payment or date of invoice, whichever is earlier, that will be the time of supply. Case number four. Supposingly, this is after, this is before, this is after then, this is matching with girlfriend. It means what? Date of invoice will be time of supply. Similarly, I have already given this here, right? So, this is so simple. Will you be able to uh, answer? Yes. So, this you can see. Now, for example, your time of supply ka answer is on or after this date. For example, your time of supply answer is 15th February 2019. Now the question here is which tax rate will be applicable? 12% or 8%? 12%. Because from this date, rate changes no. If for example, rate of GST is 10th January, then, then this, this rate will come. This will be the effective rate. Right? That's it. That's it. Now here, everything I have already covered in note, all you have to read is what uh, this point is important. And these four points you can read, right? Listen, generally date of payment is what? Date of crediting in bank account or date of entry in book entry whichever is earlier but if amount credited in bank account after four working days 
from date of change in rate from date of change in rate then date of credit itself will be date of payment in that case don't in that case don't do whichever is earlier okay so read this this is important if question is silent for fcm or rcm always solve the question assuming fcm that is well i have already told you this right now this is just for reading come to this point when excess advance amount received over and above invoice value does not exceed 1000 then supplier has an option to treat the time of supply to the extent of such excess amount either date of invoice or date of payment what does it mean for example this is supplier and this is who recipient now the invoice was of rupees 5000 but this person has collected the advance from this person of rupees 5800 so here what is happening excess advance how much is excess advance 800 if excess amount received over and above the invoice value does not exceed 1000 yes this is not exceeding 1000 then for this excess 800 what will be the time of supply so here supplier has the option that he can treat time of supply to this to the extent of this advance either date of invoice or date of payment that's it right now everyone listen time of supply means what time of supply means you becomes liable to pay gst so what is the due date of making payment due date of making payment of gst is what 20th of the next month is the due date of making payment of gst for example september month ka liability of gst september month gst so what is the due date of making payment of this gst 20th of the next month which is 20th october for october it will be what 20th of the november for november 20th of the December like that. So remember this can be asked in MCQ, okay, and can be asked in a question also. That's it, right? Okay. So now coming to the next topic, which is A graded. I I can say it. Yeah, means when question comes, so always comes for eight to ten marks. If it will come, it will come for eight to ten marks. If it will not come, it will not come. That's it. So. before i start place of supply top pay please take a break of 2 minutes then i'll start okay
so the break extended for 10 minutes so no worries uh topic place of supply is also a graded um i can consider it means yes okay now in this particular topic we have total four sections section number 10 11 12 and 13 10 11 is for goods 12 13 is for service 10 for domestic supply of goods 11 for import and export 12 is for domestic supply of services 13 is for international supply of services so place of supply concept is why why place of supply is important listen then the place of supply and location of supplier both is within same state then we call it intra state if place of supply and location of supplier both in different state or different duty then we call it interstate so you must know why place of supply important right so place of supply and location of supplier both are in the same state or same ut then intra state then c plus s or u will come if place of supply and location of supplier both are in different state two different states different uts one state one ut then inter state then i only i c s t will come that's it all right so let's cover this topic a very simple topic section number 10 uh, talks about what place of supply in case of goods right so when supply of goods involves movement then where movement of goods terminates for delivery to the recipient that will be place of supply in case of bill to ship to model you remember so principal place of business of such third party will be place of supply important important when supply doesn't involve movement then example pre installed furniture then location of goods at the time of delivery will be place of supply not so important when goods installed are assembled at a site then place where the goods are assembled or installed that will be place of supply important when goods are supplied on board a conveyance then can you see this then place when such where such goods have been taken on board that will be the place of supply got it yes i think you understood please read it very important coming to section number 11 talks about place of supply in case of import and in case of export. in case of import location of importer will be place of supply in case of export location outside india will be place of supply section 10 and and 10 and 11 done and dusted only now only two sections are left so let's cover section number 12 and section number 13 section number 12 talks about place of supply in case of domestic supply of in case of domestic supply of sorry services domestic supply of services domestic supply of services means what when location of supplier and location of recipient both are in india both are in india then determine place of supply using section number 12 this is general rule 12 to is general in section number 12 we have total 1 to 14 subsection section number 1 just gives an intro two is what general rule general rule says that if you are unable to determine place of supply using 3 to 14 subsection then determine place of supply using general rule general rule is what important if supposing lean exam you are studying that oh, how to determine place of supply this is not covered in 3 to 14 then then determine use make rules uh, use general rule use mean means use general rule section number 22 is saying use mean general general rule says what if recipient is registered location of recipient will be place of supply if registered if is un recipient is unregistered then location of address on record if address on record is not available then location of supplier will be place of supply important very important 12 3 services in relation to immovable property what will be the place of supply location or intended location of immovable property will be place of supply but if immovable property is located outside india then 
location of recipient will be the code of supply. If we move our properties located in more than one state or UT, then proportionately in proportion to value of supply collected separately will be place of supply. Right? I'll give you one example. Listen. In case of services which are in relation to immobile property, for example, any service which is in relation to, for example, interior designing, exterior designing, uh, or uh, hotel accommodation services, which is in relation to immovable property. What will be the place of supply? Where immovable property is located or intended to be located. If that is located or intended to be located outside India, then location of recipient will be place of supply. If immovable property is located in more than one state, then then in proportion to value collected separately. I am giving you example. Why? Because already gave an example. Listen. For example, this is Sharanya. Sharanya is in Chennai, in Tamil Nadu. She is what? One interior designer. Now, this is Sharanya's. Who? This is Sharanya's customer who is in Maharashtra. Now, this person wants interior decoration services for his property which is located in Dehradun. In that case, what will be the place of supply? First point. Place of supply in case of services which is in relation to immobile property will be what? Location or intended location of immobile property. What will, what will be the place of supply then? Dehradun, where immobile property is located. Second point. For example, this is Saranya again in Chennai in Tamil Nadu. Right? Now, he, she, she is in an interior designer. Now, this is customer who is in Mumbai. Now, he wants interior designing services for his property which is located at Dubai. Dubai, Dubai. Then, when more property is located outside India, then location of recipient which is Maharashtra. Maharashtra will be place of supply. So, here loc location of supplier is in Tamil Nadu. Location of recipient is Maharashtra. Both are in different states, then IGST will come. How question comes in exam? They will give you two to four transactions. You will have to determine what is the place of supply. They will twist the question, but make sure you just stick to the provision. Whatever question they are giving, you just understand from which provision the question came. That will be the answer. What will be the answer? Whatever is given in the provision. That's it. For example, immobile property is located in more than one state, then. Each such state in relation, each such state in the proportion of value of supply collected separately will be the place of supply. That's it. Now, 12.4. Performance-based services. For example, healthcare, restaurant, personal grooming, catering, fitness and beauty treatment. For performance-based services. What will be the place of supply where such services are actually performed? In case of 12, 5 talks about training and performance appraisal services. In case of training and performance appraisal services, what will be the place of supply? Very simple. If recipient is registered, location of recipient. If unregistered, then place of performance will be place of supply. Admission to an, 12, 6 is what? Admission to an event or park. What will be the place of supply? And ancillary services also. Okay, what will be the place of supply where such event is actually held or park is situated? In case of event management and ancillary service, this is admission entry ticket caller, and this is you are an event manager, you are providing the services. What will be the place of supply if the recipient is registered? Location of recipient. If a recipient is unregistered, then location where the event is actually held. For example, in this case, if event held outside India, then location of recipient. If event in head in more than one state or UT, then in proportion to value of supply collected separately will be place of supply. Now, what to remember, how to remember, I don't know. This what is important? This is important. This is important. This 12.7 is important. Now, coming to 12.8. Transportation of goods. 
in case of transportation of goods if recipient is registered location of recipient if unregistered then location where goods are handed over for their transport if transportation is outside india then the destination of goods will be place of supply 12 line this is also important passenger transportation services this is also important passenger transportation services in case of passenger transportation services if recipient is registered location of recipient if unregistered then place of embarkation for a continuous journey will be place of supply that return journey shall be treated as separate journey in case of right to passage metro card for example apply general rule travel then if services supplied on board a conveyance then first scheduled departure point will be place of supply 12 11 important telecommunication service telecommunication services if provided for example reliance is providing with the telecommunication services if telecommunication services provided through fixed line or dis or circuit then location where this is situated that will be the place of supply if reliance is providing you postpaid services then billing address will be time a uh, place of supply if prepaid mobile or internet services then if that is through selling agent or reseller then address of selling agent reseller or distributor if by any person to final consumer then where the voucher is sold or payment is received through internet banking upi then address on record in any other case what to remember see till here remember can be asked this time okay important 12 12 financial and stock broking services in case of financial and stock broking services address on record will be place of supply if that is not available then location of supply will be place of supply insurance services in case of insurance services if recipient is registered location of recipient unregistered then address on record will be place of supply that's it come to 12 after 12 come to section number 13 section number 13 13 talks about place of supply in case of international services international supply of services means what when location of supplier or location of recipient any one's location is outside india then when question will come in exam no you will have to determine whether is of section 10 whether is of 11 whether is of 12 or whether is of is of 13 you will have to check the location of supplier and location of recipient here if that is both in india then 12 if once in uh, once any one location is outside india then 13 Eleven is for import export of goods. Ten is for domestic supply. Of goods. All right. Now, section number thirteen two. Again, in this section we have total one to thirteen subsection. One is intro. Two is what general rule. General rule is what place of supply will be location of recipient. If that is not available, then location of supplier. If you are unable to determine place of supply in three to thirteen points, then come to two thirteen two. Thirteen three is what performance based services. Performance based services. All right. Just for reading. Thirteen four in relation to immovable property. Here simple answer location or intended location of immovable property will be the place of supply. Here thirteen five admission to or organizing. Here they have combined the both the both. What will be the place of supply where event is held? In case thirteen six is what? In case of three four and five services, what is three four five? Performance based services. In case of immobile property related services. In case of admission to or organizing an event services. If these serve any of if these services are supplied at multiple states, multiple locations, including one location in territory a taxable territory, then Location in taxable territory will be the place of supply. Thirteen seven says if three four five services supplied in more than one state or UT, then proportionately here this is multiple location, including one location in taxable territory, then location in taxable territory will be the place of supply. Thirteen eight following services, this is important. Intermediary services they will give you exam and you will be able to you won't be able to determine this is thirteen eight, but yes remember. Thirteen eight is what intermediary services. In this case, what will be the place of supply? Location of supply. Thirteen nine. In case of transportation of goods, destination of goods will be place of supply. 
in case of passenger transportation services place of embarkation will be place of supply in case of services on board a conveyance for scheduled departure here this is very simple here one line place of supply that's it that's all about for that all about a uh, place of supply now in exam they can ask write a short note on export what is export when supplier is in india let's read it from here it will be signed if i'll write it will be signed supplier is in india recipient outside india and place of supply is also outside india then and supplier and recipient both are not mere establishment of distinct person they both are not distinct person and supplier receives consideration in foreign convertible currency or in inr then if all the five uh, two four five five conditions are met then that transaction is what export supply got it so what is export supply very simple supplier is in india recipient outside india place of supply outside india supplier and recipient both are not distinct person and supplier receives consideration in foreign current convert, convertible currency or in inr if all the five points are met then that is what export supply so this short form if you stuck please have a look of it if you are stuck stuck in while reading the chart that's it so that's all about place of supply isn't it so simple yes coming to next topic which is value of supply very important value of supply i have told you that gst is a tax tax on supply supply of goods or services except taxes on alcoholic liquor for human consumption paid by a taxable person uh, taxable person on value on value so how to calculate this value this is the topic simple in exam one practical question can be asked from this talk that calculate value of taxable supply calculate value of supply right so let's understand how to calculate value listen when supply is between unrelated person when supplier and when parties are unrelated and price is the sole consideration then Then, 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 value of supply will be transaction value. Transaction value means what? When price is the sole consideration and parties are un unrelated, then value of supply will be transaction value. Transaction value means what? Price actually paid or payable. Section number fifteen one says that if parties are unrelated and price is the sole consideration, then in that case. value of supply will be transaction value section number 15 2 says transaction value includes transaction will value includes this top iis iis stock transaction value includes what this all types of taxes but other than gst taxes and tcs so all types of taxes duties means all types of taxes if in exam they will ask calculate value of supply they will give you a number of things and you must know that what the whether it will be covered under the value of supply or not so value of supply transaction value includes all taxes other than gst taxes and tcs o obligation of supplier paid by the recipient p packing charges uh, i incidental expense one more i interest penalty late fee for delayed payment and always assume that is received including the in, including 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 in uh, gst this is including gst okay as subsidies which are directly linked to the price excluding subsidies provided by the central government or state government so what did i tell you when parties are section number 15 one says when parties are unrelated and price is the sole consideration in that case value of supply will be transaction value which is price actually paid or payable 152 says value uh, this transaction value will include top i i c s all taxes other than gst uh, or tcs obligation of supplier paid by recipient 
टैक्सिंग चार्जेस इंसिडेंटल चार्जेस फॉर एग्जाम्पल रेट पेमेंट चार्जेस इंश्योरेंस ऑल इंसिडेंटल चार्जेस इंटरेस्ट पेनाल्टी लेट फीस फॉर डिलेट पेमेंट कमीशन हियर ऑल काइंड ऑफ कमीशन सब्सिडी विच सब्सिडी अदर देन गवर्नमेंट सब्सिडी ओके दैट्स इट फिफ्टीन थ्री से ट्रांजेक्शन वैल्यू सेल एक्सक्लूड डिस्काउंट ट्रांजेक्शन वैल्यू सेल एक्सक्लूड डिस्काउंट बट रिमेम्बर डिस्काउंट आर ऑफ टू टाइप ऑन और बिफोर सप्लाई डिस्काउंट आफ्टर सेल डिस्काउंट दैट विल ऑलवेज बी एक्सक्लूडेड डिस्काउंट गिवन ऑन और बिफोर दी सप्लाई एट और बिफोर एट और बिफोर दी टाइम कम टू दिस चार्ट इफ डिस्काउंट डिस्काउंट इज गिवेन बिफोर और एट द टाइम ऑफ सप्लाई ऑलवेज एक्सक्लूडेड बट आफ्टर सप्लाई डिस्काउंट Excluded if all India rank conditions are fulfilled. AIR condition means what? When there is a prior agreement between supplier and recipient about the discount and linked to invoice. Discount is linked to invoice and I R reversal of I by the recipient in respect of discount. Then only exclude. Otherwise, let it be there. What is fifteen four? If you are unable to determine supply using section number fifteen, then apply valuation rules. Valuation rules are very simple. Rule twenty-seven. When price is not the sole consideration, then you can't determine a uh, supply uh, value using fifteen by because you can determine value of supply using section number fifteen only when the price is the sole consideration and parties are unrelated. But if price is not the sole consideration, then value of supply will be either of the following open market value or money plus fair market value of additional consideration or value of like kind value of supply of like kind and quality rule 30 or 31 in the given order any one will be what value of supply if value if supply is between distinct person or related person then determine value of supply using Rule twenty eight says, open market value or value of goods or uh, services of like kind and quality or rule thirty thirty one in a sequence. Means any of uh, any of this will be what value of supply. This is important. Rule twenty eight is important. When supply is between related person or distinct person, apply rule number twenty eight. Rule twenty eight says. Either open market value. If open market is not available, uh, open market value is not available, then value of goods of goods or services of like kind and quality, and that is also not available, then then apply rule thirty or thirty one in the given order. That will be the value of supply. But here, supplier has an option. If supplier you don't want to determine value using rule twenty eight, then 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 if goods are intended for Further supply as such by the recipient. If recipient is supplying goods as such, then then supplier take value of supply as ninety percent of the price charged for the supply of goods of like kind, like kind and quality by the recipient to this unrelated customer, like kind and quality. Then O H T. Remember, if second, if recipient is eligible for hundred percent I T C, then value of supply will be. Value declared in the invoice. So this rule twenty eight is important. Rule twenty eight is important. Come to rule. Uh, sorry. Come to rule number twenty nine. When supply is between agent and principal, then open market value or ninety percent of this. This I have already told you. You know this. What is this? That will be play, uh, value of supply. Otherwise, apply rule thirty or thirty one in the given order. What is rule thirty? Simple. Rule thirty is nothing but what? Take one ten percent of the cost. That's it. Rule thirty one best judgment. That's it. Thirty one A is what? Value of supply in case of ex table claims. Ex table claims mean what? Lottery betting and gambling and horse racing. What will be the value of supply in case of lottery? In case of lottery, take hundred. What to take? Do Fair value of ticket or price notified by the organizing state, whichever is higher, divided by one twenty eight and multiplied with hundred. This will be the value of supply. In case of this is in case of lottery. 
in case of betting gambling and horse races what will be the value of supply 100% of face value of bet or amount we need to totality that's it value of supply in case of buying and selling of second hand goods what will be the value of supply in case of buying and selling of second hand goods once in exam question came whether buying and selling of second hand goods is supply or not yes it is supply so what will be the value of supply here simple if itc on purchase of such goods are valid if are valid then value of supply will be transaction value if not valid then sale price minus purchase price will be what value of supply if that is negative then ignore it purchase price in case of sale of repurchased goods from a defaulting borrower what will be the purchase price i have already we have already solved the question in regular class right but day one before exam i tell you just remember the concepts that's it so in day in case when the goods are sale of goods that re royal enfield possess defaulting borrower you remember that example yes now listen in that case purchase price will be what purchase price of defaulting borrower minus 5% quarter per quarter or part that value of supply in case of coupon or voucher what will be the value of supply in case of coupon or voucher money value of goods or services redeemable against such coupon or for example token voucher is of 2000 but you are redeeming redeeming it for 2500 what will be the value of supply money value money value which is 2500 redeemable against such voucher value of supply in case of pure agent all expenses or cost incurred by a supplier as a pure agent shall not be farming part of value of supply don't consider it in value of supply rate of exchange for determination for example your value of supply is coming in foreign currency then you will have to convert it in inr no then only you will be paying gst so it in case of goods use which conversion rate rate notified by cpic i have already covered it in customs and in case of services apply rate as per generally accepted accounting principles can be asked in mcq so remember that that if value is inclusive of tax then calculate value of supply how simple for example 1 lakh 10000 is given that is inclusive of tax 10% calculate value of supply then 1 lakh 10000 equal to 110 so in 200 equal how much so reverse calculation right that's it we are done with the value of supply topic revision isn't it isn't it amazing yes because day one before you will have to keep your mind light you can't fill everything in your mind right so just listen and chill that's it coming to next topic and the next topic is what tds tcs very simple very simple very simple topic tds tcs can be asked in mcq since i have told you that i cover each and every single topic that's why i am covering everything tds tcs listen tds what is the section for tds 51 what is the section for tcs 52 when to deduct when recipient that is deductor who will de uh, deduct tds the person who is making the payment so under gst who makes the payment recipient of supply or recipient of service or recipient of goods so if recipient is government if recipient is government and value of taxable supply received is more than 2 lakhs 50000 value of taxable supply value of taxable supply is more than 2 lakhs 50000 excluding taxes then recipient is required to deduct tds at what rate at 2% at 2% 1% cgst 1% sc and tds deductor will always file return gstr 7 gstr 7 right no tds in following cases no tds in following cases just for giving if you deducted but fails to deposit tds then you will have to pay interest at what rate 18% 18% per annum 
and if you are late filing your tds return gsdr 7 then late fees is also there 25 per day cgst 25 per day sgst maximum late fee can be 1000 cgst or 1000 of sgst interest so you will have to pay any if tds is not deducted then 10000 rupees penalty that's it let's come to tcs tax collected at so tcs under 52 all right under 52 who will collect tcs for example this is online buyer he has placed the one order where amazon on amazon 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 is what e commerce operator when he placed order then amazon will direct supplier about the order then supplier will dispatch goods to the customer then amazon will make payment to whom to supplier so while making the payment to supplier amazon will collect tcs at what rate 1% 0.5% cgst 0.5% sgst right and tcs collector that is amazon will file gstr 8 no tcs in following cases just for reading and if you see what is the difference between tds and tcs so section tds 51 tcs 52 rate tds 2% tcs 1% 1c 1s 1.5c 0.5s value limit if that is more than 2 lakhs 50000 then only tds needs to be deducted here no limit deducted by deductor collected by collector return these gst are seven gst are eight that's it done and dusted isn't it simple yes now coming to our topic the name of the topic is what tax invoice debit note and credit note are you guys listening to me very carefully please just relax just go to bed right use your earphones Use your headphones. Just keep calm and listen to me carefully. That's it. If you are listening each and every single words of mine, I am making it sure in exam you will be recalling. You will be able to recall every. Trust me. But please, day one before, don't start study as a mad. We don't start study every. That's it. Don't solve. Don't start solving questions. just recall the provision that is it now coming to tax invoice debit note and credit note topic from this topic write a short note will come they will ask in our write a short note or will ask in mcq right what is the importance of tax invoice without tax invoice you can't avail itc so tax invoice is an important indicator to determine time of supply without tax invoice you can't avail itc so this is important under gst regime tax invoice is an essential document for the recipient to claim itc if in exam question will come write a short note on tax invoice importance you will be able to write when should a tax invoice to be issued by the supplier when the tax invoice should be issued by the supplier remember i have already told you this is important right the rest is just for reading what should be the contents of tax invoice in a tax invoice what should be the content name address gst number of supplier name address gst number of recipient date of issue consecutive serial number hsn code right hsn code hsn hsn code what is the full form of h in hsn code harmonize the system of nomenclature that is a code which is used to classify the goods and for services we have for services we have accounting okay description of goods or services so these all are what contents of a tax invoice quantity value of goods right value of goods rate of tax amount of tax place of supply in case of interstate supply only signature so these all are the what contents of a tax invoice got it all right now what is revised tax invoice just 
for uh, just let's see it. A registered person may within one month from the date of issuance of certificate of registration issue a revised invoice just for reading, yeah, just for reading, just for reading, right? Now, no tax invoice needs to be issued if the value of supply is less than 200 and supply is to an unregistered person who is not requiring the tax invoice. In that case, no need to issue the tax invoice. Come to bill of supply. What is bill of supply? Bill of supply shall be issued in two cases. In case of composite supply, I have already told you. And in case the person who is supplying exempt supply is excluded. So in two cases, bill of supply shall be issued. What are the contents of bill of supply, everyone? The composite supply cannot charge tax, cannot collect tax. So in bill of supply, tax amount will not be mentioned. That's it. Otherwise, whatever the contents of uh, tax invoice, everything will be there other than tax. Rate and tax amount, right? That. For advance receipt, supposedly, this is supplier, supplier received advance from the recipient, then he will be issuing what? Received voucher. For example, after receiving the advance, this person did not supply anything to this recipient, then this person will be issuing what? Refund voucher. Got it, everyone? Once in exam in December 18, question came for five marks. What are the contents of received voucher? What are the contents of received vouchers? Let's read it. A registered person shall on receipt of advance payment with respect to any supply of goods or services, services issue a received voucher or any other document. Now, received voucher shall contain the following particulars. You are receiving the advance. For example, you are uh, receiving the advance. One document for which is received the voucher, you will be issuing to the person from whom you have received the advance. Now, what will you be mentioning in that document? Name and address and GST number of the supplier. Serial number will also be there in that voucher. Date of issue will be there. Right? That is everything is just matching with the content of tax invoice. But few addition or few details. Subject to the additional date of its issue, name, address of recipient, description, amount of advance taken. This will come extra. This is extra. Date of tax, amount of tax, place of supply in case of interstate. Whether the tax is payable on RCM basis, that will also be, uh, be there in uh, advance uh, receipt voucher. Signature, that's it. E invoicing. E invoicing. Registered person. Whose aggregate turnover in any financial year from 1718 is more than 50 CR, he will issue e invoice with respect to supplies to the registered person. Who is required to issue e invoice, electronic invoice, the person, the registered person whose aggregate turnover in any financial year is more than 50 CR, he will be issuing e invoice. E invoice is not applicable in following cases. In following cases, no electronic invoices. Even if the value is exceeding, in case he is a special economic zone supplier, is the government department, the local authority, the banking company, the GTA is a passenger transportation services and it is a multiplex. So can be asked in exam, please make it as a important. Make it important. That mark it important, it is important. Debit note and credit note. What is debit note, credit note? important already asked in exam but this is also important first and firstly understand what is debit note where tax invoice has been issued for supply of any goods or services the taxable value or tax charged in that invoice is found to be less for example this is supplier supplier issued one tax invoice invoice to this recipient and he charged value value of rupees 10 lakhs GST of rupees 1 lakh and total 11 lakhs the invoice, tax invoice he has issued to this recipient. Later on, he found that, oh, I have issued the tax invoice where mistakenly I have taken value less. It should be 20 lakhs here and here GST should be of 2 lakh. So the value, total value should be 22 lakh. But I have issued the tax invoice of less value than 
in that case this supplier will issue with a one debit note debit note of 10 lakhs value and of 1 lakhs of tax one debit note he will issue so when one debit note shall be issued whenever the supplier is thinking that i have i have charged less value or less tax in respect of such supply then he will be issuing what he will be issuing debit note credit note reverse that ulta right means what when supplier has issued the tax invoice charging extra but later on he found oh i should have charged less amount then in that case credit note should be when the credit note should be issued when taxable value is in excess when goods supplied or returned by the recipient in case of sale return in case goods or uh, services both supplied to be deficient means that is defective so in that case credit note shall be issued once in exam question came what are the contents of a debit note or credit note or a revised tax invoice in june 15 what are the content what should be the content the document should con uh, contain that whether it is a revised tax invoice that should be indicated separately this is same this this same this is same this is same everything is same nature of document and these two things is things are extra now coming to requirement of mentioning hsn code hsn code every time it is not needed but listen if aggregate turnover in preceding preceding financial year this is pre previous financial year okay is up to 5 crs then 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 four digit if that is more than five cr yeah, then six digit uh, code you will have to mention can be asked in mc this question came in december 18 for five marks the question was they has uh, they have given one, uh, one text invoice they have drawn and they asked identify any five mistakes or errors in the above gst text invoice five marks so read this text invoice what is given date is given company ka name is given gst number is given right purchaser name is given gst number of purchaser is given quantity given value given G i gst amount is given total amount is given signature is no signature is given so what is the mistake Te tax invoice does not contain the serial no serial number in tax invoice address of supplier is also missing gst number of supplier is incorrect why incorrect gst is a 15 gst number is a 15 digit number so here it is how much 33639 only one, one digit is missing so gst number is also given uh, missing means uh, see always remember gst is a 15 digit number okay and rate per unit of supply is not given quantity is given but rate per quantity is not given hsn or sac is also is not given rate of gst is not given signature is also not given so these all are the mistakes so this which is very simple right if you know what are the contents of a tax invoice you will be able to identify it easily that's it that's all about the tax invoice debit note and credit note now let's come to accounts and records and audit under gst topic this is also a very simple topic shall we proceed with yes so let's come to accounts and records and audit under gst you might be thinking ma'am this uh, uh, you are 
completing all the chapters, even small topics you are completing. Why? Why? Just because, just for you guys. Why? Because I really want that you just complete the hundred percent entire syllabus, all the topics you cover, so that you could score well in it. That's why I'm covering each and every single question, right? Now. Accounts and records and audit under GST. One simple amendment is there in this chapter. I'll tell you. Wait a minute. Not an issue. Now listen. Accounts and records. What accounts? Once in exam question came. What accounts? Accounts and records. This supplier has taken registration under GST. So this person is required to keep some record. GST record. GST account, right? And GST audit. So I am talking about all these things, right? So what record everyone? So every registered person is required to maintain a true and fair record of PSI 2 O2. PSI 2 O2 means what? Of production and manufacturing of goods, exam question, okay? Of stock of goods, of inward or outward supply of goods or services, two I's are there. ITC of ad. O, two O's are there, output tax payable and paid and any other particular. So what accounts the person is re, uh, required to maintain? True and correct record of correct accounts, accounts of PSI to O2. Where? At principal place of business. And at additional place of business, the records which are pertaining to additional place of business. How? Either electronically or physically. What records? Accounts. What accounts? These accounts. What records? What records? So following records. But they won't ask this. What comes here? Listen. What records? Let's read it. Registered person is required to maintain the following records. This record, this record, this record. Goods or uh, services imported or exported, supply on which tax is payable under RCM, stock records, right? Everything. But remember, stock records are not required to be maintained by a composite supplier. Stock record means what? ORSCB means stock record means what? Of opening balance of stock received, supply of goods lost, destroyed, written of disposed of by way of gift or free sample or balance of stock. Stock record means what? All these records. But stock record is not required to be maintained by a supplier who is a composite supplier. Record of advance received, detail of tax, means tax record. Okay, like tax payable, tax collected, paid, input tax credit, everything. And tax record is also not required to be maintained by composite supplier. Always remember, two records are not required to be maintained by a composite supplier. One is what? Stock record. And the other one is what? Tax record. Can a record, can be asked in exam. Right? Now. These records, right? Read it just for reading. But always remember, two records are not required to be maintained by composite supplier, stock record, and tax record. That's it. Now, next, an agent record. Agent is required to maintain what records? So, agent is required. Agent means what? Principal wala agent. Remember? So, agent is required to maintain following records principal wise. Whatever, uh, whether the part particulars of authorization received, does agent have? Does agent have authority to sell goods on behalf of principal so that authorization in written? Then particulars including DQB, description, quantity and value of goods received on behalf of principal. Particulars relating to DQB, description, quantity and value of goods supplied on behalf of principal. Details of accounts furnished to principal and tax paid. That's it. That's all about, uh, that's all records one agent is required to be. Work contract, important work contract records. A registered person who is executing a work contract is required to maintain the following record. Name and address of the person on whose behalf the work contract is executed. DQB, what is DQB? Description quantity value. DQB of goods or services received for the execution of work contract. DQB of goods or services utilized for the execution of work contract. Detail of payment received in respect of each work contract, name and address of the supplier from whom he has received the goods or services. Very important. Please read it carefully. Okay. Now, what are the what is the retention period? 
very important can be asked in MCQ or in a short note. So retention period is what? For example, 2017-18 is there. For this year, till when the record should be maintained? So listen. For 17-18, what is the due date of filing? Due date of filing annual return. For 17-18, what is the due date of filing annual return? 31st December 2018. From this date till 72 months, that is till 6 year from this date, you will have to retain your accounts, right? So every registered person must maintain the accounts and record for at least 72 months from the date of furnishing annual return for the year pertaining to such accounts and records. Right? Now, audit, audit by C and CME. Now, omitted, no need to, no need to conduct GST audit by C or CME. This is omitted. If in exam, they will give you that whether accounts needs to be audited by a C or CME. No, the answer is no. Right? That's it. This is just for reading. No need to read it. Now let's come to audit. Accounts and records is done, right? Now come to audit under GST. What is audit? You know what is audit. How many types of audit? Now they now only two types of audits are there. 65 audit and 66 audit. Audit by tax authorities and special audit. Audit by tax authorities means what? 65. Audit by a special audit means what? Section number 6. Let's come and read this. If you don't want to detail or uh, read detail in detail 65 and 66, just read it and you will be able to write a short note if it will come in exam. What is the nature of audit under 65? Departmental audit. 66, this is special audit. This audit is conducted by whom? Officer authorized by commission. 66, that is special audit is conducted by whom? C or CMA nominated by commission. Prior notice is required? Yes, under section number 65, which is audited by tax authorities. 15 working days prior notice is required. Here, for a special audit, no requirement. Time limit to complete the audit? Time limit to complete the audit? 3 months, 6 months extension, 90 days, 90 days extension. Right? So, just read this and write a short note will come. So, you whatever you know about 65, read a make point and read note. Uh, right note, right? And similarly for 60. So your this chapter is also done and dusted. Now coming to payment of tax chapter. This is also one A graded topic. Payment of tax. How will you be making payment of tax? How many types of payments under GST is the every month? For intrastate supply, you pay CGST and SGST or UPGST. For interstate supply, you pay IGST. And interest penalty, late fee, any other dues, whenever it is at the How many electronic ledgers are there? Three types. Electronic cash ledger, electronic credit ledger, electronic liability ledger. Electronic cash ledger will reflect all the deposits made in cash, TDS, TCS, whatever amount is there that will be reflected in cash. This ledger can be used to make any payment, that is, of tax, of interest, of late fees, of penalty, of any other. Electronic credit ledger will reflect the total input tax credit available for taxpayer. This ledger can be used only to make payment of tax, not to make the payment of interest, late fees. Understood? Right. Electronic liability ledger. It will reflect the total liability of a taxpayer. Right? Now. So, total three types of electronic ledgers are there. So, understand what is electronic cash ledger first. Once in exam, question came for cash ledger, electronic cash ledger for five marks. So, let's read it. How will you be depositing amount in cash ledger, electronic cash ledger? Offline is not permitted. But, 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 for any FT, RTGS, no limit. You can deposit. Over the counter, only maximum up to 10,000 you can deposit. But this restriction of 10,000 is not applicable 
in following cases in case you are a government department and in case proper officer or any other officer authorized to collect amount during the investigation online npfc no limit credit card debit card no limit you can deposit online any any means any amount you can deposit but payment to be deposited in cash is or using chalan chalan cannot be cannot be manually or physically it is mandatorily to be generated online chalan validity of chalan 15 days cross transfer is permitted by pmt 09 but directly you can't utilize it you directly you can't utilize right cross utilization directly is not permitted firstly you will have to transfer it to the correct ledger using pmt 09 coming to electronic credit ledger what is electronic credit credit ledger which reflect the total input tax credit of a tax payer All right. So here, order of utilization. What should be the order? Not manner of utilization. This is not order. This is manner. Man manner of utilization is what? Simple. This is very important. Firstly, IGST, ITC should be used, and then if any balance of ITC or IGST is there, then that ITC you can use in making payment of CGST or SGST like this. once you have completely exhausted igst itc then you can use cgst itc cgst itc first thing can be used to make self payment means what self uh, for cgst output tax liability then if balance is there then you can use it in making payment of igst it means you can't use cgst itc in making payment of sgst now sgi sgst itc firstly pay sgst then if balance is there then pay igst it means sgst itc you can't use in making payment of cgst that's it that is that is that is very important concept okay that is the manner of utilization of itc now electronic liability ledger is what i have already told you what is it uh, which will reflect the total liability of a tax payer so firstly you will be making payment using electronic credit ledger then balance by recharging cash what will be the order of discharging the liability firstly all dues related to previous tax period then all dues related to current tax period then all dues related to including demand right so this will be the order of making payment interest on delayed payment of tax very important when interest is payable when there is a delay in making payment of tax full or part then you will have to pay interest at the rate of 18% per annum right after the due date till the date of actual payment but if you have taken under your excess itc or you have reduced your output tax liability then you will have to pay interest at the rate of 24% per annum note interest shall be payable on net cash liability interest is payable even if there is no show cause notice issued by the department and to pay demand under section 7374 you can't use itc that's all about the payment of tax topic is that clear now done and dusted yes so remaining remaining chapters remaining chapters means what input tax credit registration return miscellaneous topic exemption i think only these topics are pending so only of 1 to 2 hours one additional one second part i'll be uploading short in a day or two okay so subscribe to the channel if you haven't already to get all the no notifications on time and if you think that this video help you a lot then don't forget to hit the like button do the comment and let me know yaar please uh, if actually this uh, video helped you in revising your idt then please do a comment uh, do one comment so that i could understand that students are watching my video right now done for today means this part one is done totally done and dusted remaining topics that is itc return registration exemption and miscellaneous that i'll be uploading in part number 2 all right 
share with your friends and yes if you are watching this video in the first week of june then please please take the hand uh, take this chart and uh, solve questions also all right and if you are watching this video day one before your exam then i will recommend that only listen to this video that's enough that's all about part number 1 i hope you guys like this video and i try to cover everything on to point which is exam oriented and i am sure somewhere in exam this video gonna help you a lot okay so bye bye take care and please don't forget to share the video if uh, you want to share with your friends please share and uh, subscribe to the channel for all the notifications on time all right done